So let's start with part one of the homework. Finish making the components look acceptable. We styled sidebar. Let's style the others. So I'm going to start with app. Start at the top. Maybe we can get an actual like overall page layout before we dig into the details. So app.css. What's in here now is what was in there from Create React app. Stuff to make the logo spin and all that stuff. If we look at uh, static.css, see if we can figure out which styles here apply to that. So we got a couple Google fonts, or we got yeah two Google fonts in one import statement. We've got font awesome. Got a rule here uh, that looks to apply to the whole page. Here we've got something that's actually the app class. Then I would say this this H1 rule probably ought to go on app as well. So I'm going to say from there, from the H1 up, let's copy all those rules from static into app CSS, and we'll replace everything that's in app CSS today. We don't need to keep that. I'm going to put the, the, the heading rules above app. It's kind of an illogical order I had them in. Then we can talk about what they do. Uh, let's see how that affected the page. OK, it looks even worse. Great. So let's see what's happening. This. The star selector means it applies to every element. Box sizing border box. So the DOM has what's called a box model. And that includes an element, its padding, its border, and its margin, all of which can be set independently. If you inspect an element in the inspector, underneath all the styles here, you'll see a representation of the box model. And as you hover over each part, it'll, it'll highlight it up there on the screen. Like here, you can see that left margin in green, or left padding, I mean. So actual thing, the padding, the border, the margin. So for one thing, it's interesting to note that the border is between the padding and the margin. So padding is inside the border, margin is outside. So margin is like the space between things. Padding is the space within something. So the question is, if you just set the element width, with the width CSS property, what is that actually applying to? And the answer is in the, in the box model, in the actual official box model, that is just the width of the element itself, not including any of the other stuff. And for a long time, uh, the different browsers did not implement this the same. Internet Explorer did it their own way, where the padding was actually part of the width, and the border was too. Setting width on Internet Explorer meant everything except the margin, whereas everywhere, everywhere else it just meant, and according to the standard, it meant just the innermost part. And curse them for not following the standard, but their idea was probably actually better because you usually want to say, like, the border, the border, everything within the border, that's the part that you're trying to determine takes up a particular portion of the screen. Um, not just the portion inside the padding. Uh, so that made it really hard sometimes to line things up when you couldn't set the width inclusive of the padding and border. So a fairly recent CSS property that is still technically uh, experimental is box sizing. If you set that to border box, then everything's going to behave the way Internet Explorer used to. So the important thing is everything's going to behave the same. And now padding and border are included in width when you set that. So we did that. The HTML element, not even the body, but actual HTML, the root of all elements. If you set the font size on that, what that does, because you'll notice I immediately set it to 14 on the body, and every, everything on the page is actually a descendant of that. But what it does to set it on the HTML element itself is to set the value of one rim. We talked about Ms and Rims both being relative to font size, and rims 
are relative to the font size for the entire page, the base font size, i.e. the font size of the HTML root element. So if you set that to 10 pixels, 16 is the default in most browsers. Um, then A, I know exactly what it is because I said it explicitly. And B, 10 is a pretty easy number to work with, setting percentages and stuff. So did that. That also happens to be uh, what it's set to in the bootstrap framework. We're not using any CSS frameworks in this one, but on body, font size, line height, margin, image, I set vertical aligned to middle, which we talked about the fact that uh, vert vertical alignment is uh, a nightmare in CSS, but um, this does do something that we want. And then for all headings, H1 through H5, we set a font that's Fauna 1, that's one of these uh, Google fonts that I imported here. I set the weight, that's actually the, the default anyway. And I set it to this nice pretty blue color. And then on the app component itself, I set a font family of Oxygen, which is the other Google font I imported. If that's not there, it'll do Helvetica, Arial, Sans Serif. In that order. But yeah, doesn't look like much. We just changed a bunch of font sizes and stuff. We didn't actually do any layout. For that, we need to go to main, <coughs> our main component, which has no CSS right now. Back in static CSS, there's a whopping one rule for that, but it's an important one. So I'm going to copy that over from static CSS, put it in main CSS. Display flex. Just telling it we're using Flexbox for layout. Set the height to 100 VH. VH is viewport height, i.e. the height of what is currently visible in the window. So it's always going to be 100% of that. Align items stretch. This is one of those Flexbox rules. We looked at some of those yesterday that have to do with what it does with leftover space. Here's align items. Align items stretch. You can kind of see what these what these do. Should they align all at the top, at the bottom, all in the middle, all at the bottom of where the text ends, or should they stretch to fill the whole height? Well, that's what we want. We want the sidebar to fill the whole height. We want the list to fill the whole height and the, the form. So you see the, the gray bar here kind of ended abruptly, right? as soon as it ran out of things to put there. Now it fills up the whole height, and it looks much better. We've also got this effect, which is kind of interesting. We didn't talk about that yesterday, did we? Did we? OK. Um, so that was back in Sidebar, of course, Sidebar CSS. So these are two images. If you look at the Sidebar component, We imported those two images, right? These two pings, new hover and new icon. And they're both here side by side in separate image elements. So why aren't they next to each other? In sidebar CSS, here's the rule. So an image that is inside a button that is inside the sidebar, I use absolute positioning, which tells it exactly where to put the thing. You can uh, position that using left, right, top, bottom. So left, zero, just means you know at the very beginning of this element, really, is all I'm saying. So what good does that do me? What, how's that different from just not putting that? Well, it takes it out of the flow of documents, so it's not going to worry about whether there's space for other things. It's just going to put it exactly where I say. Um, absolute positioning will still be relative to something. It'll be relative to the entire page unless there is something in its ancestor hierarchy that has positioning. So on the button, I have position relative. I don't set top, right, left, or bottom. I just say position relative so that the button is a positioned element. All that accomplishes for me is that when I say position absolute left zero on the image, that means zero pixels from the left of button, not the page. So that image isn't hugging the very left side of the page. It's hugging the left side of where the button is, which is where it would have been anyway. 
But by doing that, it means both images are going to be right on top of each other. So the second one's going to be the one you actually see. It's going to be covering the other one up. Which brings us to the next rule. Image with a class of outline, that's, uh, that's the second one, the one we're looking at now. Image with a class of outline that is a descendant of a button that we're hovering over that is within the sidebar. Set the opacity to zero. In other words, it's completely transparent. So when you hover over it, it becomes transparent, which means you can see the image that's underneath. And on the image, we set a transition like we did yesterday or the day before, whenever that was. Um, we, we did that with a quarter second, I think, before. That just meant do something gradually. Here we do a little more. We say opacity specifically, so that's the only one of the CSS properties that's going to be affected by this transition. Happens over a quarter of a second, and then there's ease in, out. That means is, say this animation takes six frames. Is it going to split that 100% opacity to 0% opacity? Is it going to space those six frames evenly across that? Maybe six isn't the easiest one to deal with. <laughs> let's, say, let's say five. So is it going to go from 100% to 80% to 60% to 40% to 20% to zero? You can specify something else. You can specify a function to apply to the transition so that it uh, kind of speeds up and slows down in the middle of the animation. So ease in out means it's going to start out becoming transparent very slowly. Then it's going to start getting transparent a little faster. And then at the end, it's going to kind of slow down again. All of that happens over a quarter of a second in this case. So it's pretty dang subtle. But it ends up looking like that, which is pretty nice. If we were, were to increase this to 10 seconds or something, it would be a little more obvious. And again, especially if we zoom in. So let's watch that happen. Beautiful. Now I'm off of it again. Now it's going back. I think you'll agree 10 seconds is probably a little too long. So all of that's happening in a quarter second. But it looks real nice. All right, so we styled the main component. We have Flexbox now. And I didn't commit just doing the app component, right? No. Style the app and main components.